Dear friends, it is a great pleasure for me to present this book from Hindu Kush to Salt Range, my reign, Indo Greek, and Indo Scythian coin hoards, with my good friend and dear colleague, Professor Susmita Basu Majundar. I met Professor Basu Majundar in 2004 in Kolkata. Since then, we have been working together. I was very impressed by her multidisciplinary knowledge. Today, she has become one of the best, if not the best, Indian numismatist. It is thus a privilege for me to be her co-author. The history of the Myrians, Indo-Greeks and Indo-Scythians is an important part of early Indian history. Unfortunately, for these periods, Written sources are particularly rare, so historians rely more on archaeological, epigraphic, and especially numismatic evidence to reconstruct their history. Since coins are an important source of information, they must be treated scientifically, which is exactly what Professor Basumajunda and I have tried to do. Coins are thus crucial to understand the history, not only of these kings, but also of the eras and regions. In addition to their stylistic features, suggesting broad chronological periods, the war strikes of one king on the coins of another king, indicating the succession of their reigns, and the minting techniques, metrology, iconography and monograms associated with fine spots, helping to assess the geographical location of the different kingdoms, the composition of the coin hoards gives a new insight into the economic activities, modes of production and artistic tastes of the region where they were found. The political inst instability in many of these regions and the lack of accurate information on composition of coin hoards make this task increasingly difficult. However, we were fortunate to have full access to some of important hoards in the past. We present in this volume four hitherto unpublished hoards. We have discussed the specificity of each hoard in the commentary. Professor Susmita Basumajundar, who undertook a detailed study of the punchmark coins, which were found together with Hindu Greek coins in the Barikot hoard, has made a great contribution. I may say a few words about the Hindu Greek coins found in the Barikot Charsada and Amshari forts and Hindu Scythian coins in the Mingora hoard. The importance of the Barikot hoard is its composition. It contained 240 imperial punchmark coins and 231 bilingual coins issued by eight Hindu Greek kings who ruled in the territories south of the Hindu Kush range. We were able to examine all the coins, take photographs and take their weights and dimensions before they got dispersed. As has been well argued by Professor Basuma Junda, the Barikot hoard was not methodically built up, but hoarded at a precise moment, perhaps during the reign of the Indo Greek king Nicias, or soon after. The composition of the hoard is quite similar to the one found in Kauzikale, a small village in the Swat Valley near Saitu Sharif, found in 1992. This hoard presumably contained silo tetradrams and drams of Apollodotus I, Antimachus II. Menander the first Soter, Lysias, Antialkidas, Philoxenus, and Nicias. 
apart from Soilus the first, represented by one drug in the Barikot Road, all the other kings are attested in the Kausikale Road, which I published elsewhere. As one would expect, the later Hindu Greek kings who reigned in the Punjab, Soilus the second, Dionysius, Apollophanes, Strato the second and third, are not represented in both hordes, revealing that these later Hindu Greek kings never ruled in the Swat Valley. On the contrary, the Am Sharif horde found in the Salt Range represents many of these later Hindu Greek kings. Although the portraits of each king have some iconographic resemblances, some physiognomic features change according to the monograms or family of monograms. I have made an initial attempt to distinguish the coin portrait of Soilus II in the section of the Am Shari Port in this book. A close examination of the coins of the Am Shari Port, Barikot Hod, along with some selected coins of Euclides I, studied in the final chapter, led me to observe that first the coin motifs were engraved and then the legend. It is also possible that there were two different engravers, one for the motifs and the other for the legend. The Charsada hood also has few rare coins. The tetrarams number 20 struck by straight or the first with the bust of the king seen from the back thrust in a spear with his up, upraised right hand is in better condition mm -hmm. compared to the broken coin of the same series in the British Museum. Likewise, coin number 22 is the second known specimen depicting the bearded middle-aged king. The 15 Indusidian coins of the third hoard were founded in a small clay pot in a village close to Mingora in the Upper Swat district in Pakistan. Am Sharif Ford is composed of 185 coins of the late Hindu Greek kings. It was a part of a bigger hoard that surfaced in the vicinity of the Am Sharif area in the Salt Range in 2004. The original hoard may have contained more than 1,000 silver drums of late Hindu Greek rulers like Apollodotus II, Dionysius, Soilius II, Apollophanes, Strato II and III, the Indusidian kings like Kasilises and Aziz, and local Indian satraps like Badriasa and Rujwala. The hoard was then split into several parts. Heinz Golik published 127 coins and cautiously concluded that it was from the Taxila area. He came to this conclusion relying on the information given by a dealer in Peshawar. My own investigations carried out in Peshawar and in the Salt Range enabled me to conclude that it was a part of the same hoard found accidentally in Am Sharif. Out of 185 coins, the present hoard 177 are of Soilus II. The hoard thus, for the first time, has brought to light surprising number of coins struck by this indo greek ruler. The present book, I hope, will be of much use to numismatic studies of ancient India. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Smita Halder and Inc. Beyond the Imagination for publishing this volume so well. This book is only the beginning of a series of publications that Professor Basu Majunda and I wish to publish in the near future on Central and South Asian numismatics. I thank you all very much.